Hi friends, uh, today we are going to discuss legal aspects of uh, medical practice, Bolito test. Myself, uh, Professor Suresh Bharadmat, I have done my MD, DNB and also medical law ethics and also human rights law, PhD in law from National Law School. Currently, I am working as a Professor of Psychiatry, Head of Telemedicine Centre, Head of Forensic Psychiatry Services at Nimans, Bangalore. I do also teach in National Law School as an honorary teacher for Medical Law Ethics program. Before I start my presentation, I would like to have a disclaimer. This presentation is basically for academic purpose only. If you would like to have any legal opinion, please do contact an advocate. This presentation is not a law themselves or not a substitute for legal profession. This presentation do not discuss any individual legislation like MTP Act, PNDT Act, TOA Act, POCSO, Mental Health Care Act, or RPWD Act and so forth. There are many acts which I am not going to discuss. Now, this is, uh, we have discussed I was BOLA. Now we will go to the second step that is Bolito test. See, Bolito test is again which has occurred in 1997, not far uh, back. It's hardly a few year, around 20 years back. That is two decades back. See, in this, a uh, Patrico Bolito, a two-year-old boy was suffering from severe cough and also breathlessness. So he is admitted in a St. Bartholomew's Hospital and uh, in, uh, he is admitted in ICU care and in one of the duty time they, in the ICU, this Patrick Obolith goes into severe cough and breathlessness episode. Immediately the nurse in the ICU calls the doctor on duty, Dr. Horn and Dr. Roger, but both of them were in the casualty. So since uh, they were in the casualty, they took some time to come before they came, the child Patrick Obolith recovered completely without any problem. So by the time they were about to come, the nurse said that he, the baby has recovered. And again, he was doing well. After some time, again, the child, Patrick Obolith, goes into a similar kind of severe cough and breathlessness. Again, the Dr. Horn and Roger were called. By the time before they both the doctors were able to come, the Patrick co recovered. In the third incident, Patrick goes into severe breathlessness and convulsions and also sudden cardiac arrest. Before the doctors came, he also had a already brain damage. By the time they somehow resuscitated him, but he developed severe brain damage, later he dies. So this is a case which Bolito Patrick test, his family goes to court now, telling that the uh, family members uh, were very unhappy with the way the uh, Patrick Bolito was dealt here. So again, the, uh, they followed the Bolam's test, they called the expert's opinion. So the experts said that, see, if I had gone to the ICU, I would have not done anything. I would have done a symptomatic treatment because the child is two year old, he is having severe cough and he is having breathlessness. We can't do anything. So it is a symptomatic treatment and nothing could have been done. That is one set of expert opinions spoke about this. The next set of experts said, no, no. I would have tried intubation along with symptomatic treatment. This is the two groups of experts were discussing. The, now the judge became very unhappy with the experts opinion were dealing. Because the issue the judge felt is not attending the case. It's not what treatment I would have given. Since whether the treatment is available or not or even if I had, was available what methodology I would have chosen comes later. So in Bolito test, the, this case came up with important point called as Bolito test. That test says, Bolam test gets nullified when a body of expert opinion cannot be logically supported at all. Basically, if you are going to give a Bolam's test, that test, what it says is, a reasonable degree of care has to be given by a doctor, Okay, which all the peer will accept it. So along with that, now this Bolam's test should be logically explained in the court of law and the court should also accept. Now the two criteria, one is professional peer review acceptance, second one is the court also should be explained in a logical way. If you are unable to explain logical way, Bolam test is nullified. That means the doctor will be considered as guilty or what we call it as negligent. 
So, summarizing Bolito test, if it can be demonstrated that the professional opinion was not able, not capable of its standing logical analysis, Bolam test will be nullified. Although the body of professional opinion sanctioning the doctor's conduct where it had not been demonstrated to the courts or the judges satisfaction or what we call it as logical analysis, the Bolam test will not be considered. That is called as Bolito test. So, summarizing both Bolam and Bolito, Bolam is a reasonable degree of care where a prudent doctor will follow a standard of care which his friends or his colleagues or his peer will review and say yes this is what is right along with that logically you have to explain the Bolam test to the court or to the judge. If both stands well the doctor will not be considered as medically negligent. So these are the two Bolam and Bolito test. So, coming to the last point with all this civil negligence you have understood, criminal negligence you have understood, following CPG guidelines you have understood and also Bolands and Bolito test. How do you go about reducing the potential, potential of liability in case of uh, what we call it as medical practice? I am coming to the last part of my presentation. Maintain open and honest communication. You have, a, If you are a good communicator, the negligence cases will be very less. Majority of the cases and across the world when they had asked the families the main reasons they have said is we want to teach a lesson to the doctor because the doctor was very rude that is the say so that means communication should be very important the general population do accept that the doctor tried his best but if you are rude if you are shouting if there is a malpractice involved the they just they go to the court just only for reason to teach lesson and they will approach multiple places. They will go to state council, they will put a consumer court, they may even consider human rights commission, they may even give complaint to the what we call it as clinical establishment act and they make the doctor's life hell because your communication was not open and it is not honest. Be respectful, be give, be give, have empathizing skills. Though I know there may be many a time the family members may become rude under those circumstances, please don't understand the family has lost somebody or they have gone going through a severe injury. It may not be your what we call it as negligence. You have not done anything, but still you have to be uh, sympathy and empathy should be there. Keep open and candid, clear communication. That is very essential. Follow the reasonable standard of care. That is very, very essential. Maintain competence in your area of speciality and area of practice. And the very essential is document properly. If you don't document, that means the court will consider it. You are not done. So very essential is you have to document properly. At the same time, you have to communicate that. So essential ingredient is document the communication and communicate the documentation. These are very essential. And at the same time, continue the education classes in your area of expertise so that you are up to date about the knowledge. To conclude, the medical professionals are entitled to get protection. So long as they perform their duties, with reasonable degree of skills and competence with the best interest of the patients. The interest and the welfare of the patients have to be paramount. And uh, my dear friends, so a medical negligence, Bolam test and Bolito test are very essential. Thank you very much.